let me start by saying hello. I'm Gene Spafford. I'm the founder and, and executive director emeritus, uh, which means former uh, executive director of Sirius. And Sirius is uh, a large organization here on campus. It is a campus-wide institute devoted to a number of issues, primarily cybersecurity, privacy, cyber physical systems, explainable AI, um, things that affect people if systems don't work as they're supposed to. Um, what we're going to try and do here is switch this presentation over to Joel Rasmus, who is our managing director, and he is going to present this remotely. Um, and Joel, I don't have a second screen, so you'll have to send me messages when you want me to advance. Will do. Good uh, afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for showing up. We have a nice turnout. Um, and as Professor Spafford had mentioned, that uh, this is being recorded. We will post it on our, uh, our website. Uh, so please help spread the word to the other students uh, that might be in your classes, your friends, your labs, what it may be, who have an interest in cybersecurity. And as Spaff has mentioned, our definition of cybersecurity is very, very broad. So if we'd go to the next slide, please. Oops, there we go. There we go. So this is kind of who in a nutshell. This is the elevator pitch and what is serious or who is serious. So we're the largest, oldest, and top-ranked interdisciplinary education and research institute for cyber and cyber physical systems. And our faculty and students conduct re impactful research in the areas of security, privacy, resiliency, autonomy, trusted electronics, and explainable AI. So while the world is still in need of top IT security talent, there's more that can be done to provide a more cyber secure world. So one of the series' goals is to bring together these world-class faculty, students, and industry partners uh, who are all working, at least try to move this into a more secure world. So uh, next slide. So there's often a question is that, uh, well, I'm in computer science or I'm in the polytechnic, I'm in the computer science uh, undergraduate major, I'm in uh, ECE, but I'm working on trusted electronics. There's, there is no one discipline that is considered cybersecurity. And so as such, we have affiliated with us 135 Purdue faculty who come from 20 different academic departments across eight different colleges. So I've mentioned some of the departments and colleges right now that make sense, computer science, ECE, and other engineering disciplines, and several disciplines within the College of Science, primarily being, I'm sorry, in the Polytechnic, uh, primarily being the computer science and CIT. But there's also those that are spread out across the rest of the disciplines, and Krenner, a number of students and faculty who are working on the economics of cybersecurity, who are training people to be CISOs and CIOs, who are working on uh, the idea of how you can work against fraud in social media. Social media is also an area of in interest by people in computer in uh, communications and liberal arts, a number of people in liberal arts who are affiliated with this. There are people across campus, and as I just mentioned, 20 different departments. Now that's just the faculty. If we take a look at the students, there are thousands of students at Purdue who are studying in a discipline that's related to cyber or cyber physical security. So on the right hand of this slide, you will see the different uh, home colleges at Purdue. The one that is not there is the Honors College. But all but two of these colleges do we have faculty who are affiliated. Those two without serious affiliated faculty are pharmacy and veterinary medicine. Interestingly enough, our faculty are conducting research in these areas. It just happens to be faculty in different disciplines who are working on problems for pharmacy 
and who are working on problems for veterinary medicine. We don't have any pharmacy, pharmacy uh, professors or veterinary professors who are working in cyber yet. Uh, I suspect we'll take over the world sometime and, and across absolutely every department there will be, or at least every college, there will be somebody involved in this. And next slide, please. So in the definition of who is serious, I mentioned three constituencies. I said world-class faculty, students, and industry partners. So while I'm happy to talk at any time about our faculty and our industry partners, uh, tonight's focus obviously is on our student constituency. You in the audience, both here in Lawson as well as online, and then the well over a thousand who we have not quite reached yet and you're gonna help us connect to. Next slide. So this entire presentation is really, why would you want to be a, a serious affiliated student? So students, why register with Sirius? And that's what we're all driving here. In the chat box, I've put four different uh, uh, links to things on our on the Sirius web pages. And the first one is also here on this slide. And I think nearly every other slide that I'll be showing. Um, and actually, this is an incorrect one. So it uh, should be new student. So students receive a number of benefits. So the student from any department that has an interest in cyber, cybersecurity can self-register, self-affiliate with Sirius. And what that primarily does is it puts you on our, it puts you on our roles, but it puts you on our email list so that when we have announcements or things to share or events to host, you're recognized and get special treatment because of that. And these next few slides are all gonna talk about that. I'm not gonna just read the slides because you can all read these slides, but I will touch base on, on some of the points. So throughout the year we host and others on campus will host uh, special events, whether that's lecturers, challenges, competitions, or workshops. So we use our serious student list to be able to promote those opportunities. Because if you're interested in cybersecurity, there's a darn good chance that you're gonna be interested in some of these special events. Uh, that are on campus. We also have, we also host Purdue Signature Cybersecurity event each year in the spring. Well, lucky you guys that the event that it was supposed to take, <laughs> take place in the spring because of the pandemic has been postponed. So the first time ever, we will have this serious, the annual Serious Security Symposium held twice within a year. And the first one is coming up next month, October 19 and 20, and registration is already open to that. And because you are going to be a serious affiliated student, it is uh, free for you to be able to attend. And because it's virtual, you won't have to miss any classes. You can pop in and out and be able to participate in any of the events that you have an interest in. We're gonna return to this late in the presentation. And then we, were, we are planning to return to our normal schedule of hosting the annual symposium in the spring, and that will be at the end of, end of March. Next uh, slide, please. So career assistance. Purdue and Sirius has the reputation of churning out unbelievably great, well-trained students. And so many organizations are reaching out to us, both commercial and government saying, what can we do to hire your brilliant students? And so one of the things we do is we try to connect our brilliant students with, organiz with top organizations who are looking for talent, again, across the very, very broadly defined area of what is cybersecurity. So there will be organizations that will wanna to come to campus. Uh, we will have some coming up very soon for MITRE Corporation, which is a US federally uh, supported research laboratory, several of the Department of Energy research laboratories, and then commercial companies as well that will come. They'll show up their laptop. Oftentimes they will uh, order pizza uh, and then they'll run through and say, let me tell you about my company. It gives you an opportunity that you can wear your jeans, you can wear your shorts, you can wear whatever your t-shirts, you can take in the information and then, then decide whether this is an organization that you'd like to learn more about, that you'd potentially like to intern in the summer, that you'd potentially like to work at. So it's a low pressure opportunity to be able to learn everything, learn some things about the organization. 
We also have career job announcements. So our partners will send us, hey, Joel, we're looking for entry level or mid-level, or we're looking for somebody with very specialized expertise. Can you share this with your students? Sometimes that share this with your students is, can you blast this out and let as many students at Purdue know about this? Sometimes it comes in and say, this is a very computer science oriented. Can you just share with CS students who are in the security track? Or we're looking for front lines applied people to be systems administrators, systems architects. We probably will find those in the polytechnic. Can you share there? And again, the examples can go on throughout it. There's also the opportunity that they'll come in and they'll say, Joel, this is requiring somebody with a PhD. So we try not to send those to the undergraduates. If you're a freshman, you're probably not quite ready to talk about PhD candidate jobs. So we will parse that down and send it out. Now, one very important notice that because we do have several US government uh, entities that are part of our organization, and because many of them do work obviously for the US government or the military, that they are required to hire uh, people who are clearable, meaning that they are able to have a U.S. security clearance. And it is it, uh, at this point, it is extremely rare for a non-U.S. citizen to be able to get a security clearance. So I cannot guarantee to all of our uh, international students, our non-U.S. citizen students, that you will not ever see a job uh, that will come out that will require you to be a citizen. But we do try to parse those back. So if you do see one that comes through, and oftentimes they'll come through and here, here are opportunities at four different companies that as we are now entering uh, into September, the hard recruitment time for these organizations, there's an opportunity that you will see of those and, and you look at the job description and realize that there is that requirement that precludes you from, from, um, from applying. Apologies in advance if you see those, that is just the nature of the world. Uh, and we know the same thing in uh, students who are in your home countries and other countries that there are those same there are those same restrictions the globe over. We just understand it. But as you all know, there's more than a million job opportunities right now of open recs for for uh, for cybersecurity people. So if it's not a job that you can't apply, that you're not able to apply for because you're not a U.S. citizen, I'm sorry. Then that's we still have 999,999 other jobs that we'll be able to help you potentially look for out there. So we also host a cybersecurity job fair every year. This year it will be virtual and it'll be on September 20th. There will be a slide devoted to that specifically. And it is one of the slides that's later, one of the, the links that's in the chat right now. Sirius is also the holder of the Center for Academic Excellence in Cybersecurity. That's a certification or a designation that is given out by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the National Security Agency, so DHS and NSA. So we are actually one of the, I'm going to use the air quotes, original seven. When they introduced this program, we were one of the seven, one of the original seven universities that said this organization, this college is doing a great job in uh, training uh, students to go work uh, in cybersecurity. So as by virtue of being part of the CAE, the Center for Academic Excellence, uh, there are several US government hosted uh, job fairs and they may be located around the country and they're also virtual. So uh, there will be one that I'll be sending out in the next day or two to promoting one of those virtual career fairs that's not hosted at Purdue, but is open to all Purdue students because you are part of a Center for Academic Excellence. Next slide, please. Oh, by the way, is Monica in the audience? If so, raise your hand. Uh, I caught this on Twitter. I knew that you were, you, I knew that you'd kill it uh, in your internship, but it was great to see uh, NASA tweet out uh, how great of an internship that you had this summer. Next slide, please. Yeah. So, um, I do know that these both of these students, I saw your name in there, that you're either in the room or online there. So also students are usually looking for funding at the graduate level. That means you're looking for somebody to either underwrite your full education and or your research. And at the undergrad level, you're looking for potentially opportunities to have some of or all of your education paid for. These opportunities don't come up every day. But we do have opportunities to promote scholarships for cybersecurity focused students. Those are primarily undergraduate focused. Uh, 
and then fellowship opportunities, which are primarily graduate uh, uh, student focused. Uh, and I will be sending out a few of those in the next couple of days as well. And then opportunities that are right here on campus are the next three. So whether they're teaching assistantships, most of you already recognize those as a TA, or a grad assistantship, a GA, those announcements will come out to help one of our fac one of our affiliated faculty with their classes and their labs, whatever. There are also serious research assistantships, and we'll be announcing some of those soon. And that will ask you that if you are funded graduate students, if you are actually undergraduates as well, that if you were to be chosen, what research would you want to conduct this semester? And that would be next semester. Uh, and then uh, Sirius will pick up your your tuition, so uh, and fees. So it's a so they're pretty cool. So look for those opportunities. And I put down there that that these cover uh, not only tuition and fees, but if you're a graduate student, it actually provides a stipend or monthly salary. Next uh, next slide, please. So I mentioned uh, uh, some student clubs that are out there. So there are a number of clubs. So the next couple of slides will do there. So this uh, slide is actually a brag on two of our team, two of our student clubs uh, that have done very, very well in the last 12 months uh, and are preparing for competitions right now. So there are a number of these clubs, competition teams, honor societies that are here at Purdue and at our sister organizations at IUPUI. Uh, and IUPOI's, uh, the Cyber JAGs, uh, function as an extension of Purdue cybersecurity. So anytime one of our clubs, teams, honor societies has an event, we'll also promote that uh, through, through the website. Next slide. And here are the list of those organizations. And, uh, you know, any student uh, group, any student group, can get together and form a new club or a student organization. So if, you're, so if you are aware of other uh, new uh, cybersecurity oriented uh, clubs at Purdue or at IUPUI or at any of the regional Purdue campuses, please let me know. We'll reach out to them, offer them a seat on our cybersecurity student uh, advisory board. I do know that uh, there is a, um, there is a uh, organization that is uh, that hosts uh, an annual hackathon, uh, and I have struggled to make contact with that organization. So, if you're affiliated with that group, please drop me an email. I uh, would love to know more about your organization and promote your club's uh, opportunities. So, each of these organizations that are on here do have a website link off of the Sirius website that you can uh, contact those organizations direct. They all are having their call outs at this time. And at the end of our talk, if any of the uh, leadership of any of these clubs uh, would like to have a few minutes to speak, please raise your hand at the end. And we're happy to turn over and, and have you announce your call out dates or give us a brief elevator pitch about uh, what makes what's cool about your club and why you're different than other clubs. Uh, it's very, very pleasing to me personally to have a, a student advisory board that has each club uh, represented on it because we've seen great uh, cooperation between all the clubs. So these, these clubs do not compete against each other. They're all part of the very diverse landscape and ecosystem at Purdue of what is cybersecurity. So we've even had opportunities that we've had competitions that, aha, this isn't necessarily a perfect fit for any one of our clubs, but we've had members of the Forensics Club, members of WESIS, members of the CCDC Club, and Boilers, which is the Capture the Flag Club, put together odd ad, ad hoc uh, groups and go and compete together. So it's a lot of fun to see these things and very proud because student organizations at Purdue always seem to do extremely well. Next slide. So student, uh, serious students also receive, click line, there we go, the opportunity to promote your own work. So if you're a graduate student, you're probably uh, working in a lab or soon will be working with a faculty member or conducting research on your own. Undergrads, some of you will get involved in research and many of you will be working on class projects uh, at some point under your undergraduate uh, degree uh, times. 
So we use this as an opportunity to be able to help you promote your work. And there's a number of things we do, whether it's the poster session that's held at the annual Sirius Symposium, or this year, the biannual Sirius Symposium, uh, or opportunities throughout other events to be able to promote. And there's a number of events outside of just Sirius that will be computing oriented or industry specific poster sessions. And so we will share those with you as well. And then the last couple of points on bullet points on this slide. So if you do get invited to a conference uh, to present, not just a conference to attend, but to present, and the presenters or your research does not cover that, reach out to us. We do not have a large pot of money, but we do have a small pot of money that has been donated by past students and alums uh, of Purdue and, and of the programs here that enables us to give out small grants to students who have been invited to present at other at, uh, at conferences. And if you've been invited to uh, present your poster at a, at a conference or at the Sirius conference each year, we have complimentary poster printing uh, services that are available. So uh, Mike Ficosi, who's at the front of the room, uh, and you can find his information on our website as well as my information and all the rest of our staff, uh, just reach out and we're happy to print your posters for you to take to the conference or seminar that you're at. Next. Now there's a good looking guy on this slide. Talk about the two on the left, of course. <laughs> oh, there are other things that we do and this is almost the other uh, slide. So there are routinely our faculty come up, affiliated faculty come up with new classes they're going to offer, or there's a visiting scholar or a visiting faculty member from another university or from industry who said, next semester, I'm going to teach this class. And they're typically things that are word of mouth uh, that students we'll hear about to be able to register. Well, we try to be part of that word of mouth and sharing with uh, all students, regardless of department, uh, who have an interest in cybersecurity about new class offerings. We also, throughout the year, will host cybersecurity interested students from other universities. We, at this point, we are planning to have cybersecurity students from across Central and Eastern Europe come in uh, in uh, January, February time. Not the time that I would recommend visiting West Lafayette, but that works for the schedule. So there will be opportunities for serious students, serious affiliated students to be able to play host to these uh, bright students who are coming from uh, uh, emerging US uh, partners uh, across, uh, uh, in this case, across Europe. But we certainly have opportunities to draw student visitors from other places around the globe. And of course, from other universities across Indiana and across the United States and the rest of North America. So there are times that student projects or graduate students or undergraduates who are doing research will need equipment or technical assistance. Now we don't have a large supply of every single piece of computer or industrial control uh, equipment sitting in our storage, but we do have a sizable amount. So if you need to spin up uh, a simple IT network or a simple OT network or a quite complex IT or OT network virtually on the Solus Laboratory, we do have an awful lot of equipment and uh, virtual research platforms that are available to students for short-term, long-term research, uh, uh, research projects or class or club projects. So reach out to either me or to Adam Hammer. Again, you can find him. Uh, and I believe he's in the room as well, uh, and we can help. Uh, and we're always looking to help our, st our students. And then uh, uh, several of the clubs use the Sirius Conference Room as their monthly meeting location. So if you're looking for a place to meet, uh, to hold a meeting, to, uh, to, to host a small event, uh, please contact us. We're happy to share our facilities uh, uh, with you. Also within our facilities is a quite extensive cybersecurity lab uh, library uh, that is primarily there uh, because of Professor Spafford's personal collection and the many books uh, that have been donated to him that uh, the years ago he said sitting at home in his library look good, but after he's read them once, uh, he occasionally will refer back to them, but uh, why not share uh, this great resource. So there is a cybersecurity library within Sirius, and you are able to come out 
In some cases, you can check out a book, but many times you just can come sign it out and, and read and, uh, the chapters that you need or pull the information you need from those books right there. So reach out uh, to us, Lori Floyd, again, on our staff coordinates that for us, and we're happy to help you. Next slide. So there's also some near-term opportunities that I've alluded to all of these, but I wanna talk about in a little bit greater um, detail here. So throughout the academic year, every Wednesday at 4.30 to 5.20, so almost exactly preceding this event today, is the Serious Security Seminar. And it is actually a four credit, four credit class, Computer Science 591 but it is available to any graduate student who has an interest in cyber, cyber physical security and any upper level undergraduate student. So a junior or senior undergraduate with permission from any serious affiliated staff or faculty member. So even if you're a junior and you're only now starting to get into cybersecurity, you can ask one of your professors or send a, a note uh, to me, an email to me, uh, and stating that you'd like to take this for credit class. Uh, and oftentimes we're able to approve that and you can take it for credit. Now, you're in a unique opportunity right now because this has been for, it traces back to 1999 when we started offering this class. Well, in the days of the pandemic with like everything else and many of your classes, especially last year and again this year, there is the virtual option. So you can sign up and take this as a four credit class uh, and attend virtually. But because it's virtual, we now allow any student, in, quite, in fact, more uh, uh, correctly, anybody, student or no student, can tune in live and uh, participate uh, in the Serious Weekly Security Seminar. So on the bottom there is, uh, is a, a website uh, that you can click through. Uh, you can take a look at the uh, slate of presenters throughout the semester. You can tune in live every week and participate, or you can tune into just the weeks that you have interest. Now, if you actually do sign up for the class, uh, it is probably the easiest class for you to pass at Purdue, because all you have to do is, is uh, attend. Throughout the semester, they have these. If you miss one or two of these classes, you still pass the course and it's pass fail, you do not get a letter grade. So you pass. If Now let's say because of demands of your laboratory or homework tests, whatever get in the way, you may miss three, four, five and now you're afraid you're going to fail. Nope, we make it very easy for you. All you have to do is go back and watch the video. And interestingly enough, if you happen to be interested in a certain specialty, within cybersecurity, and this week's talk was something that doesn't necessarily align with your interest, I would still encourage you to take a look at it to broaden your expertise, but you can go out, do a keyword search, and find something that's right in your wheelhouse. Watch that. It doesn't matter whether it was from this semester, last semester, or from 1999. You can watch that video write a short paragraph of your takeaways from the video and submit it to the professor record and you will be given credit for a class. So unless you sign up for the class uh, for credit and then never attend a lecture or never attend a video or never watching the past videos, it's virtually impossible for you to fail this class. And because the slate of speakers is different every year, you can take this class every single semester at Purdue. Now note, it's an elective. It does not count directly towards the requirements for your degree, but it will end up on your transcript as you uh, receiving a passing grade in the Serious Security Seminar for whatever semester. Next slide, please. So uh, the next in uh, chronological order, September 20th coming up, will be the Serious Career Fair. This in the past has been held in conjunction with Purdue uh, Industrial Roundtable. For those of you who are new to Purdue, the uh, Purdue Engineering Student, uh, Engineering Student Council, PSEC, uh, hosts the uh, Purdue Engineering Industrial Roundtable. It's a three or four day event, but there are two days of it that it'll be the largest career fair at Purdue. 
uh, and it started out years ago as engineering focused. It has broadened to STEM based and then broadened to almost any discipline. It is still heavier STEM and business than, than excuse me, than some of the other departments, but nearly every uh, department, uh, every college has uh, students who are at that job fair. So our event has typically coordinated with that been the night uh, of those two day event, but because we have gone virtual uh, and there are, and we would compete against other uh, campus entities that were also trying to coordinate their, their career fairs during the IR, we've revert, moved virtual and moved it a week later. So on September 20th in the afternoon will be the opportunity. So at the bottom there is a web address to be able to get more information to register and you must register. And there's actually a, a, a Vimeo a video to be able to watch because a, career, a virtual career fair is a little bit different. You will be still talking one-on-one -on -one to a company, but it will be virtual and there are lines just like regular uh, career fairs as well. So it is worthwhile going to take a look at the short video, registering and then attending that, uh, looking for either uh, uh, internships uh, for this summer or career opportunities, or even if you know those are in the near term, to put yourself on the radar of some of these companies that are desperate for top talent, and they may not be interested in hiring you as a freshman or sophomore, but they're going to put you in their list to start tracking, and they may reach out to you in a year or two and say, how is your grades going? I remember meeting you two years ago. We would be interested if you're interested in talking about opportunities at our organization. Next slide. And as I've mentioned several times already, the annual uh, Serious Security Symposium. This is Purdue University's signature cybersecurity event. When it was live and in person, we would have 400 plus registrants uh, and fill rooms in Stewart Center. Last year, we went to virtual, hoping to do okay. And we had over 700 registrants for it. Uh, so uh, very well attended. Uh, there are keynote uh, addresses from high level people, CEO, White House staff, high levels of government and military uh, will all provide keynotes. There will be topical panel discussions. That's when we slate Purdue faculty with their uh, featuring their particular research expertise, as well as people from government and commercial industry who will discuss and sometimes debate particular topics. So uh, I do know that one of the panel discussions this year is going to be on microelectronics, trustworthy microelectronics. So uh, not, not very uh, software oriented, very kind of hardware and, and actually down in many cases, uh, silicon level. How do we make trusted systems? But the other panel discussions will have other topical uh, conversations of great interest within the industry. It's an excellent opportunity for students to not only hear from fellow students asking questions, but to hear from your faculty talking off the cuff and from hearing from industry of what keeps them up at night. Technical talks. So this will your faculty will be, the various faculty across Purdue will be giving the talks on their research and their laboratories. Those of you who will be looking for a grad advisor, this is a great opportunity to be able to start to hear some of the expertise of the different labs so that you can contact those faculty or that lab and say, I'm interested in joining or I'd like to hear more about uh, research opportunities or RAGA opportunities uh, in, under your program. Because it will be virtual, there will be a virtual poster session. So it won't be a printed out poster, but every student uh, who would like an opportunity to talk about their class project, whether you're a, fresh, a first semester freshman or whether you're a postdoc and you are deep past your dissertation and now deep into your research, we want all students to be able to talk about their research. Very short presentations. You will see emails on this and I highly encourage you uh, to take up this opportunity. Every year, no exaggeration, every year students get internship and job opportunities um, from industry from this. And many times um, that job opportunity said, well, I'm still two years away from graduating or three years, or I've, I've just started my grad degree. I've just started undergraduate, but again, You'll, those people go back to their company and say, listen, two, three years, we need to be all over this student uh, based on their presentation I saw at the Sirius Symposium. 
So take advantage of this. And there will be additional opportunities for organizations to flag uh, that they are interested in recruiting students at this event and there will be a Slack channel set up. They can make connection to it. Regardless of whether the event is virtual this semester or next semester, knock on wood, where when we hopefully move back to an in-person event, serious affiliated students do not pay uh, to attend this, uh, this high visibility event. Next slide. Well, guess what? We're getting to the end of my presentation. Uh, and this is the correct email address that I want you to note. So all of these things that I talked about, and I hope a few, I hope more than a few of them are of interest to you. Um, and the way that you put yourself and start to be recognized as a serious affiliated student is go to this website, you use your Purdue credentials to log in, and it just asks you some basic uh, uh, demographic information, what program you are in, what is your, uh, what, uh, what year of study you're in, uh, where you got your other degrees, if you're a graduate student or an undergraduate who is transferring into Purdue, or let's say you got an associate's degree and now you're working on your bachelor's at Purdue. That's some basic information uh, and your research or education or career interests. So uh, then there's opportunities for us to be able to then again, be the keyword so that we can send the right opportunities to you. And then you'll see below there optionally, you can also add your resume or CV to this and update it at any time. So there will be times that we will then send out, we will ask students, can we share your resume with our partner? And so uh, unless you tell us no, we'll be able to share that out there and help identify opportunities for you to secure internships and jobs. And next slide. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Mike Adam and Professor Spafford, were there any hands that were held up of any immediate questions or potentially any of our student clubs uh, that wanted a few minutes to be able to talk about their club honor society or competition team? Yeah. Anybody here from any of those organizations? Yeah, come on up and I think you can use the mic here. Wonderful. And Wonderful. All right, I, I'll turn my uh, I'll turn my mic and video off and turn it over to students. It should be on. Hello. Are we good? You are good. All right. So, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Rowan Hart. I was previously the event coordinator and vice president of Boilers, which is the capture the flag team that Joel uh, did us the, the honor of talking about here. Um, so basically, if you haven't heard of us, what we do is we focus on playing offensive security competitions. So essentially every weekend, there is what's called a capture the flag event. And some organization, whether it's another university or another team, um, will come up with between 10 and 40 challenges of just super hard hacking competition stuff. They'll throw it at us. We have no idea what we're doing. Uh, and we just sit down and we start solving challenges. So that involves things like binary exploitation, which is, you know, uh, come up with an exploit for a binary that uh, causes some vulnerability to be exploited. You run your own code on somebody else's server. Um, that's the classic, you know, every CVE you see, the cool ones are always binary exploitation. Um, we also have reverse engineering where we'll get, again, usually a binary, but sometimes just a really hard to read Python file, somebody will send it to us and we sit down and we try and figure out exactly what it's doing. Usually there's some hidden functionality that we need to take apart. Um, and so we reverse engineer that and extract some sort of flag from it. Um, and then our other two categories, which uh, I'm not as good at, but are also just as fun are web exploitation, which is, uh, you know, you look at a website, you try and find vulnerabilities in it, whether that's through JavaScript or, uh, cross-site scripting or SQL injection. Oh, thank you, Joel, um, or something like that. And then finally, we have cryptography um, where we try and break cryptographic protocols. Sometimes there's a custom protocol that has some sort of vulnerability. Sometimes it's a real protocol like uh, TLS will be implemented using some bad value that makes it so that you can decrypt the traffic, things like that. So we play basically every weekend um, our main communication is Discord. Um, so if you go to this website, all of our information about us when we meet, our link to our Discord is on there. So if you're at all interested in playing competitions with us, all you have to do is join us and we will tell you what to do from there. Um, and there's two critical events coming up. One is our second call out. We just had one on Monday. So if you were there, hello, I missed it. 
Um, if you weren't there, we have another one on Friday. It's at 6.30 p.m. in Lawson B-155, right downstairs. Uh, so come swing by, say hello. Uh, we'll just have essentially an extended version of this um, and also a little demo of what you can expect from the types of challenges that we solve. Um, and then our more important event is the boot camp. So we don't expect people to know what they're doing in this field right away. Um, there's not a whole lot of classes here, especially at the undergraduate level that teach anything remotely related to what we're doing until you are at least a senior. So um, we run a boot camp for four weeks starting next Monday. Um, and details about that are on our Discord as well in the announcements. Um, so twice a week for about an hour, Monday and Friday at 6.30. Um, we will be doing a crash course in every topic that I just talked about. So it should be pretty fun. If you're interested in it, come learn something. If you enjoy the competitions, stick around and play with us. Uh, our most recent top rank was fifth in the US. We hit that in May and then everybody did DEF CON and passed us. So we're back down in 10th, but uh, yeah. Oh no, top 10, just horrible. Rowan, two things. Rowan, will you make sure you send me uh, the information on the call out and I will send it out to all uh, students who are, are uh, who are serious affiliated. And then also, uh, unless I missed it, I thought I, there is one piece of information that I think it's important for you to share, that this is a club that is not just geared towards any one particular major or program. You have members of your club who are from numerous majors, colleges and departments uh, across campus who all bring their expertise to your interdisciplinary competition team, correct? That's exactly right. We've got you know, we have a majority, probably, I would say, of uh, electrical, computer engineering, and computer science and data science students. But we also have people who are just interested in it and come and decide that they really like it. Uh, one of my favorite stories is Professor, uh, former Professor uh, Dennis Molnar from the physics department came and he actually first took uh, Professor Garman's 526 class and through that class he heard about our club and he started playing with us and he's one of our best players. Um, uh, and bef before he came to our boot camp, he didn't really know much about cybersecurity. And now he's one of the one of the better hackers I know. So um, anybody can do it. Highly recommend it. If you think it sounds fun, come find out. We're a competent we're a competition team. We're not a uh, uh, sit down and do class every week club. So if you like to compete and you're competitive, you'll probably like it. Another advantage to this is. Uh, you can practice breaking systems, getting into systems legally. It's permitted. Um, if you do that on your own, you can get yourself in some trouble. So uh, this is a much better way to do it. Let me just briefly uh, mention we have some of our staff present here in the room. And sort of uh, uh, these are people that Joel mentioned in his introduction. Um, it's hard to recognize people with masks, I realize, but nonetheless, uh, we'll at least give this much recognition. I'll start in the back. Adam Hammer back there is our jack of all trades when it comes to system configuration, management, software. Um, if you need something to put together for a project or you're having a problem with some of our equipment, uh, he's a good person to talk to, to get that resolved. Uh, if you haven't set anything up yet, then you really should go talk to Joel first, but uh, Adam will be the one who carries that out at the back end. Moving forward, next up, Lori Floyd. Uh, Lori uh, keeps track of our physical facilities, the library, the conference room. She's the receptionist, uh, manages uh, some of the online data does a lot of other administrative things for the center. And if you were to walk into the Sirius offices on the second floor of recitation, uh, in normal times, she would probably be the person that you would first meet. Um, currently, because of COVID restrictions, um, we have different people who are taking their turns and staffing the office. So not everybody is there every day in person but Lori is the one that you would hear from or you would contact if you want to reserve the conference room uh, or some of the facilities. And then Mike Ficosi is our webmaster, data manager, uh, everything on the website, 
the FTP archive, a lot of the other online databases and resources, he's the one who manages those. And uh, he is uh, uh, incredibly expert in the ways of HTML and uh, associated protocols. So uh, he's our wizard of that. Um, we have lots of faculty. I think uh, we, Professor Garman's here and uh, she teaches in this area. I don't know, do we have any other faculty here hiding behind a mask? Okay. Um, so as uh, Joel said, uh, Sirius uh, really formally started in 1998, but informally started in uh, 1992. The precursor to it was a, a laboratory here on campus that I started. So it's been going for a long time, has an amazing reputation because of all the great students and faculty who've been involved over the years. Uh, just this afternoon, I was in my office, had a knock on the door, somebody I hadn't seen in about 12 years, a student who graduated from here, uh, stopped by my office. He's now a senior engineer at CrowdStrike. And he got started in security because he took CS426 from me. Um, and now is a senior engineer at CrowdStrike and said, uh, because people at CrowdStrike, not just him, but the people at CrowdStrike know what a great program this is, they wanna come and recruit. Uh, so if you're interested in a career in security, they're willing to train if they can find students who have a good background in security basics and software basics, they're looking and what a great company. Uh, and that's pretty much true of most of our partners. Joel, uh, is it easy? Well, maybe I should uh, try to bring up quickly on the web. You have, do you have a slide with all the corporate partners that you can I, I do. Uh, it will take me just a moment to pull that up. But while I'm doing that, this is a, a perfect opportunity. Uh, Mike, could you find um, uh, Yancy Kim's uh, spot and unmute her so that she can uh, talk about uh, WESIS? She's currently president and we have a strong relationship with WESIS. And I'll... Um. Uh, Hi, there. can you hear me? You're live. Oh, thank you. I'm trying to start my video, but for some reason it says um, I'm not allowed. So I'm okay with audio. All right, um, thank you. So uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Yanzi. I'm president of Women in Cybersecurity Club. Uh, so we are basically Purdue chapter of this international organization. Uh, what we do is we bring together women from uh, women in cybersecurity, from academia, industry, and research. So uh, once you are in the club or in the national organization, you get to meet the women and share their knowledge, their network, mentoring, and resources, of course. Here at Purdue, how we contribute to this mission is uh, by bringing uh, us all together. You don't have to be necessarily from cybersecurity major. Like currently we have um, a folks from, I guess, liberal arts, from computer science, especially this semester. And uh, it, it's totally, if you are at all interested in cybersecurity, you can come join us. We have uh, one to one sessions with a uh, lot of companies this semester. I think we have already talked to uh, Ernst & Young, uh, Amazon, Salesforce that are coming. Um, other than that, we provide you a mentor, generally a junior and senior who could guide you through the process. Uh, we also have um, a scholarship guidance. So this year alone, we have 20 women from our club who got the scholarship to attend the annual research conference. And a bunch of them got the $500 travel uh, stipend grant as well. So that's an annual thing. Um, and most of you, uh, there's good chances to get the scholarship given you follow the rules and advice. So I would, uh, I, I'm gonna email, uh, uh, I think Joel. Uh, we have our first call out tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, I'm gonna drop our group me. That's where you can get all the details. So that's the quickest way to join us and we can lead you from there. Thank you. Thanks. So in the field of security and in computing, but security uh, as well, um, we, we have a smaller proportion of women than are 
present in the general population. And uh, so WESIS is an organization that helps support uh, women. We're sometimes feeling a real minority in the field uh, to be able to effectively participate and uh, without some of the pressures and some of the environment that they might otherwise have in a more general organization. So it's a great, it's a great organization. The conference is wonderful. And if you're at all interested, the conference is not op is, is open also to men. It is not just limit, limited to women, but that's the focus. And so if you're interested, you know, check out the check out with Yancy uh, for the groups. Um, we mentioned about organizations doing recruiting and providing internships and research problems and other kinds of things. These are the current partners for Sirius. I'm sure you don't recognize anything up there, right? Um, you know, these are major organizations internationally. Um, and you have an opportunity to find out more of what they're doing in security, to possibly participate in research at every level. It's not limited to just graduate students, but at every level with people from these companies to get internships and maybe even job offers. We're adding more all the time. Um, we're somewhat selective, which is why we don't have 200 up there. And if you can't find somebody there who's interested in what you're doing, we have other kinds of connections as well uh, for the research that we do and for the education. So with that, does anybody have any questions? Or does anybody? Yeah. Uh, I have a general question. Sure. So I noticed on your website, you guys have a page for like projects you're doing. If you're interested in, let's say you find stuff on and you're really passionate about projects, do you reach out to them through there? Or like, would you recommend waiting to hear uh, Okay, so let me let me give you two part answer. The first thing is the projects that are listed on the web page are only some of the projects that are going on. So if you don't see a project there that really catches your interest, that doesn't mean there aren't any. It's just those are the ones that for various reasons the faculty and the students have decided to promote by putting them up there. Sometimes we're doing work that is um, under non-disclosure and we can't talk about it. So, you know, that's just one thing about those projects when you see them. The second thing is more general, and I'll tell you this as a faculty member. Come talk to me at any time. You don't have to go through a website. You don't have to wait to hear about it. If you run into an article I've published or you, uh, you you see a project description or, or my name is written on a bathroom wall somewhere you think it's interesting. <laughs> um, come see me uh, or, or, make an, or make an appointment to talk to me because I'm here to work with students. Any of you who are interested, you know, let me know. I may not have something you're interested in. I may not have money to support you. Uh, which is currently the state for most of most of my research, but any of the faculty here, uh, if they've got a student who's really interested and is willing to work, we'll spend time to talk to you about it. So if you've identified something that looks interesting, uh, then set up a time to talk. Let me give you a, a clue though. If you start off with Hi, I'm looking for somebody to support my, my work. What is it you do? That isn't going to succeed. You know, that, that does not help at all. Uh, we would like students who at least have some idea what we're doing and what you're interested in to come talk to us about that. Um, if you're a little reluctant about that, okay, you can take a class uh, or you can wait until you meet somebody at one of the meetings. But uh, don't feel intimidated. I mean, we have faculty here, and I dare say I, I'm sort of one of them, who have uh, 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 you know, a distinguished career. 
and that that may be great, but we're people and we're here because we want to work with students. So don't any of you be shy about coming to talk to us if you're really interested. You're welcome. And so all of you line up and see Professor Garmin because she's <laughs> she has too much free time on her hands. No. Uh, any other questions? So we gave you a lot of information. The first step is visit the web page, register yourself. You'll start getting things in email. Explore the website. Mike has done a great job organizing it. Uh, we have a lot of information there, a lot of history there, right? We have video that goes back uh, 20 years, more than 20 years of talks of, that people have given. We have videos of uh, the la of you know, most of the annual meeting and some of the speakers. You'll find people there who are speaking who are CEOs of CrowdStrike, uh, of, um, of RSA, um, a White House advisor, uh, former uh, director of national intelligence, um, so, uh, the research director at, at the National Security Agency, an assistant secretary of state, some really high profile people with some very interesting things to say. The person who gave keynote, uh, was it, I think it was last year, is currently the White House cyber czar, um, Chris Inglis. He gave a fantastic talk as a keynote and you can see the recording. That's the kind of person we have come talk. That's the kind of person serious draws because of our reputation and you can be part of it. So the first step, register if you're interested, start looking at things, fill in, maybe some of the student groups, come talk to faculty and have a great time. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, I realize there's a lot to do in the first few weeks of classes. So get off and do your homework. <laughs> and I hope to see all of you again sometime soon. Thank you for everyone online.